speakers for the. Okay. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Emily, thanks for uh, hosting. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> no, we, we appreciate it. Uh, Jeff, do you have a count? I was just checking to see our form. We don't have a form. I, th I think our magic number is 11. Uh, the good news is we don't have any action items, so we don't need a quorum tonight. Uh, it's just informational. All the minutes and stuff, we'll, we can hold that. And if you want to do something formal, it's going to be info, and then there's no way I'm going to do it. Yeah, maybe. Oh, there's no way I'm going to do it. You're counting mayors, right? If all the mayors would just raise your hand and make it a lot easier with facing that Yeah, half the mayors yeah, raise their hand. I'm going to take off my shoe. Half the mayors raise their hand down. I think they got a lot of mayors. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Done. Twelve. Okay, we have a quorum. Okay, perfect. We'll just proceed as well. I think we're. Uh, Good. Uh, Mayor Hughes for Menden said that he's tuned in and good to go. I think uh, Craig Butter said he's going to join online. Okay. Uh, uh, Mayor Kane might be joining online. No, I, I'm sorry. I meant Mayor Can, uh, Damon Can. Con, sorry. Okay. Did everybody receive the packet that was sent out? If you didn't, I think we have one. We have a few here yeah. if you need one. We were just testing the mailing system. Looks like it worked great. <laughs> you did get the email though, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm here. Yeah, you're here. <laughs> Thanks. I think we're uh, I think we're good to go. All right, we'd like to welcome everybody to the Cash County Council uh, of Governments. Uh, today is Monday, October 19th. Um, we will make note in the minutes uh, attendance. We would like to thank Nibley for letting us uh, use their room. We're uh, spread out, and so the sound might be a little bit off uh, for comments. Uh, just so everybody's aware, in attendance, if you ask questions, we will do our best to repeat those questions. Uh, not to not to try to make a point of asking the same thing. We're going to try to get it in the microphone. That would be a little bit easier than trying to figure out a mic system with the room scenario. Uh, with that, um, Jeff, have you made a note of everybody here for the mayors? I believe so. I think I've got everyone down. Yep, we're good. Okay. Perfect. And I have received notice from uh, Mayor of Use of Menden, as well as Mayor Little and Paradise, who are attending virtually. Okay, we will, uh, anything else that's needed in that front part before we move on to minutes, Jeff? I don't think so. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, perfect. We will move on to agenda item number two, approval of the June 8, 2020 meeting minutes. And those were sent out in the packet that you all should have received. I'll take comments uh, or a motion of approval. Yeah. Yes. There's, I like Grant grammatically before. There's several places where Gilbert, Jack Gilbert is Gilbert's plural. 
Okay. We'll fix it. Okay. I'm schizophrenic. Can you handle that one, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> I have multiple personalities. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? Okay, if not, I'll take a motion. With those, with those changes, I'll make a motion to approve them. Okay. First. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries. Okay, uh, agenda item number th three, review of the cog process prioritization process project prioritization process and timeline. Jeff, I'll turn the time over to you. Just quickly, uh, on the website is the calendar, what remains of it. We have went through most of it. Uh, today is the third cog meeting of the year uh, where we'll receive the applicant presentations. Wow. Uh, and the CTAC report out of the scores. Uh, what happens uh, after today is each of you individual COG members, mayors and county executive have until October 22nd to complete your ranking. Uh, and if, if you recall, it really is as simple as rating or ranking the projects from one to eight. We have eight projects. You can see all those projects up here. Uh, you will uh, simply rank those one to eight and turn that in. Now I've sent out a spreadsheet, uh, which is kind of a automated way uh, shared, but you can just input your scores there. Did, did everyone receive that, uh, an email with that in there? So if we throw that in, you'll receive it. If you type those in, I get them. And what I'll do is uh, assume it, whatever's in there at 5 p.m. on October 22nd, I will consider those to be your final score unless you tell me otherwise. If you don't want to do it that way and that scares you off, I have paper forms here where you can do it the old fashioned way and simply uh, rank it one to eight and get that to me somehow, hard copy, mail it in, whatever, and that will be fine as well if you don't want to do it with the spreadsheet. Uh, but it should be pretty easy uh, on the spreadsheet. If you use a spreadsheet, it actually kind of sorts it for you so you can kind of see a sorted list of uh, where your scoring ends up. And if you remember, uh, each of these rankings uh, are assigned a certain point value based on our criteria. Uh, I simply tabulate those and we come up with an average uh, score uh, that's added to the technical committee scores that uh, and that uh, your scoring collectively represents about 60% of the weight. And then um, that's what the final score is that we use as a starting point. Uh, and then the, the next meeting that will, it will be on November 9th. So this is the meeting that will receive the results of that scoring, see how it all shakes out. Uh, what we do is we simply allocate the funding as far down on the list as a starting point of discussion as it'll go uh, and be being mindful of the rules set aside. And that's what will be presented to you on November 9th, which is, which is also a Monday. I've reserved the Cache County Event Center uh, for that meeting unless uh, anyone has opposition to that or I haven't checked with the mayor on that. So hopefully you're okay with that, but that, uh, I'll send out a notice for that and then that uh, will hopefully culminate the uh, COG part of this, and then we'll bounce that over to the county council and start that process. So that's how the calendar shakes out. Are there any questions on uh, your role and responsibility? I sent out an email that detailed some of the resources you can use in your scoring. Being here today will be one of those uh, resources where you can find out more about projects all the information on the website, the plan sets, their applications. Uh, feel free to go do site visits if you want. Uh, I'd be happy to meet with any of you individually if you want have questions about the ranking process or, or how I can help with providing in, any information you name, may need. So are there any questions on process or schedule? And in addition with that one, um, on the email that you guys received, uh, we've had a lot of conversation about the 
the overall funding. We have a lot of dialogue you about past the funding and where cities are at. And we discuss that uh, each each year we would go over the money that's spent, the money that's still out there. Um, in addition to that conversation that we've had, uh, there's a form that we list in there are copies here if you want copies, but it's emailed out also that um, broke it down on all of the funding per city, just to give everybody an idea of where things are at. So it gives you an idea of funding both prior. So it was broken out in COG funding 2017 and prior. And then another portion was broken out between COG funding in 18 and 19. Whereas um, it's, it's understood in general on the COG side, the most recent ones, thank you. The most recent ones um, are in process, take a while. And then as they get further out, those are the ones that we watch to try to make sure that one, cities are following through with it. And two, um, if not used, the, the funds come back or we try to have accountability to make sure that cities are properly requesting funds. And so that just helps in the overall order. And so as you can see, um, we have in last year, or 18 and 19, there's over eight and a half million that are on the books that are still there in reserve. And then prior to 2017, there's just over 5 million that are on the books on projects that COG has approved. Um, and then this breakdown kind of gives you where that city for each one. Um, and you can kind of look at that at your own city and make sure that you're aware of that. Um, as we discussed as a COG, we'll be, we'll be discussing this each year just so that we um, are better accountable on the funds. And I do appreciate Jeff, he's, he's worked hard coming into this year. He's contacted all the cities that I'm aware of on prior funds and where they are. And we had additional funds that were added in. What was that total amount that were brought back into the COG system to, to be utilized? I don't remember the rollover amount, but what we've, with those rollovers and our anticipated revenue, we're estimating 5.5 million overall is available. I, it was probably about 800,000, I yeah. think, that was uh, it, it kind was of swept It was a fair in. amount that was able to come back in. And then the whole point behind that is we're just trying to, we're just trying to maximize the funds that we have to, to the best of our ability. And, and, this just, and this just helps with that. And it also gives everybody an idea of kind of where funding's at, where the funding that's out there, both recent and long-term, uh, so that everybody's on the same page. Are there any questions? Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. With that being the case, uh, we will uh, discuss the Cash Technical Advisory Committee, CTAC, scoring recommendations, and application slash plan review report. Um, turn the time over to Jim once again. If you have questions through the process, ask those, and then we'll do our best to repeat and, uh, and continue from there. Thank you. Uh, as a technical advisory committee, we met two times over the last month and uh, reviewed the projects from a technical standpoint. And I can tell each one of you, I think this, this year, especially this year, I think every one of the projects that were submitted were really good projects. I, I don't know that I could say that in any other previous year, but every project I thought was a very worthy project and uh, would be a great benefit to the city and to the region if we were able to build them. Uh, I'm not sure how many of the members of SeaTac actually went out and did site visits. Uh, I know I went out, I, uh, I went to probably each one of your projects at least twice, some more than that. And uh, so I think we're pretty familiar with, uh, with the projects. If they didn't go out to, and do site visits, they're, uh, they're technically minded people and uh, they can pick up a set of plans and have a pretty good idea as to what the requests are what the requests are and what the uh, issues are. So I, I think we uh, made a pretty informed uh, uh, or had a pretty informed discussion. And I think the results uh, reflect that. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a great deal of time on each one of these projects. I'm, I, I wanna leave as much time as possible for, for each city. 
Uh, but I do want to give a, a real shout out to uh, the plans that we received, especially to the rural, from the rural areas. This is probably the best set of plans that, that uh, I've seen since, since we've been doing this. Uh, and it's just a tribute to the mayors and, and to the engineers who you've hired to, to put those together. They're pretty simple plans, but it, uh, it goes a long way if they're done in a manner that, that makes them very self-explanatory. So we as, a, as members of the technical committee can pick up that set of plans and know exactly what you want to do and uh, it just makes it so much easier for us. So I'm going to start with a rural area, and I'm just going to walk through these. And like I said, I'm not going to spend a great deal of time. I will tell you that the scoring, there's three categories. One is based on con con congestion. One is based on safety. And there's another one for uh, right-of-way if you are buying it in advance. Uh, and there wasn't any projects that fit in that category, so there were no points uh, assigned that way. So I'll be concentrating simply on congestion and safety. And in the past, the, the majority of our projects have, uh, have dealt primarily with congestion. Uh, our our safety, safety point system, uh, I think, uh, uh, leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, we have that discussion in, in our CTAC. Uh, we do not capture uh, a lot of the safety issues that are being addressed in these projects. It's based simply on uh, crashes and the severity of the crashes that take place on each one of these facilities. And, uh, and, and so as a result, unless you have some significant crashes, with significant injuries or fatalities, you probably aren't going to see any, any safety points, but yet you know each one of these projects has got a safety element to it. Some more than others, obviously. And I'm sure every mayor and every engineer representing every city could stand up and tout their project as being a safety project, but yet no, no points are being given. And, uh, uh, this is a great time for you at uh, well, when, you're, when your moment comes to stand up before the body and explain why you feel your project has merit as a safety project. But I'm going to start right with the rural projects. We'll start at the very top of your list there. That's Menden. You probably can't see that, but you should have a hard copy that will guide you through it. Uh, the Menden project, it's, it's a maintenance project. Uh, it... it uh, it's a chip and seal on a number of roads within Minden that have been overlaid or rebuilt in the last couple of years. It's, it's a great project because as each one of you know, if, if a chip and seal is added to the project, it adds life to that roadway. And that's what the intent of this project is, is to extend the life of the roadway and, and do it in a very cost-effective manner and uh, if, if you remember, we, we now encourage you that if you're doing a project and you anticipate putting down a chip and seal in the future, that you do it all in one project. You include it in the initial project rather than uh, build a road or overlay the road or improve the road in some way and then come back a year or two later and request additional money. We prefer to have that put in the initial request. And uh, uh, of course, we didn't have that discussion early on uh, with, with Minden. And so they're, they're back now asking for money for chip and seal. And uh, this is a very good project. It's going to add a great deal of life to, to these roads, which are important roads in Min Minden. And uh, it's done in a very cost of, in a very cost effective manner. Uh, the next one is Amalga. Uh, the Amalga Road, I think it's 5,900 north. Is that, is that right? Mm -hmm. 5,900 north. Uh, it's a very narrow road. It's only about 20 feet wide. Uh, it's, it's in poor shape. It's, it's a road that could really, you know, justifiably, you could pulverize the whole road and repave it. And uh, ideally, that, that's, that's what you'd want to see. But uh, that really drives the cost up. And so... Uh, Amalga, with the help of their engineer, which I believe was Forsman Associates, 
uh, they, they've taken a look at the road. They've identified the areas that they felt they needed to pulverize and then other areas that they thought they could just overlay. And then once that's done, they would put a chip and seal over the entire road. Uh, it's, it's a lot more cost effective. Uh, it it uh, drives down not, not only the, the money that the COG puts into it, but it also drives down the money that, that they are required to put into it. If, if this were, were in my jurisdiction and I was trying to look for a cost effective way to, to, uh, to rebuild this road, uh, given the amount of traffic that's on it, I would probably choose this way. Uh, it's, it's a very cost effective way of doing it. Uh, I do have one suggestion for Amalga, and uh, I make this, uh, it does not uh, reflect badly, please, it does not reflect badly on this project. This, this is a very good project, but as I sat out there and I watched the traffic on this road, up on the west end, uh, as you tried to make a turn onto the road, particularly if you're making a right-hand turn onto the road, the radius is really, really small. Uh, I think that there is funding available if you wanted to request maybe some additional funds to make those radiuses a little bit bigger, make it better for the motorists who are trying to make those turns. Uh, that's one thing that you might want to consider. And perhaps maybe there's enough money in there and that was the intent all along. But if not, that's one thing you might want to consider. It would make that a little bit easier for those who are uh, traveling that road. And those are the only two rural projects we received this year. Uh, the, the, the amount of funds that are, that are being requested uh, do not uh, uh, add up to what's available. There's, there's more money available and it's unfortunate that we didn't get more rural projects because there was more money that, that was untapped. Unlike last year where we had a lot more demand for money uh, then we had money available. And so you never know year in, year out what's going to happen. And uh, so. And I will make note on that one. Um, we discussed that last year. If you didn't receive a one year, it's well worth putting in because usually within a second at the most third, that's there. Um, I will make note that because of the lack of rural submission, there will be about three to 400,000 off of our estimated numbers that will go into the general use fund. That will that will be used. So that money will just, just go back into the pot to be used in a, in a future year. That's correct. No, it'll actually be this year. No, it, it just goes, goes into the. Yeah, it goes in. Ah, that's right. It goes in, so it's used. And so once again, I'll reiterate: um, it's it's good to put it on the rural side because some years it, you just don't know on the year, and sometimes it takes a little bit. But there's there's almost always funds that can come out where you can receive different uh, different portions that are needed. It just might not be the year that you initially wanted. Thank you. Okay, now on to the urban side. Uh, I wanna start with Wellsville. And I have to admit, I'd never been on this road before. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the project, it is the first road, if you are southbound, approaching the, the traffic light, it's the first road before you get to the traffic light. It's uh, that, that takes you in, into Wellsville. Years ago, this road was a concrete road. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna imagine that if you were to go back into the 50s or maybe even the 60s, it was, a, it was a narrow concrete road. Since that time, it had been overlaid with asphalt. And now this roadway is, is in very poor condition. It's uh, starting to deteriorate quite badly. There's a lot of cracks. It's very narrow. Uh, it is, uh, it's only 24 feet wide. Uh, there are no shoulders. If you tried to pull off the road in a snowstorm, you'd have no idea where you were going. Uh, there, uh, and because of the lack of shoulders, there, there is not room for pedestrians. There's not room for bicyclists. Uh, snowstorm. I was just there last week and was driving with a semi that came down that road, and my truck was halfway off on the side of that uh, dirt on that road going right off of 91. So it's a popular road. A lot of people choose to take that road rather than going up to the traffic light. And uh, uh, it, it is a road that, that gets quite a bit of use. I was surprised as to how much traffic was on it. Uh, but uh, this is a project that did not receive any, any safety points. Again, there were no crashes on it. 
but that does not mean that there weren't safety concerns that this project would address. And the main concern would be the width. Uh, a road that is, is only 24 feet wide, that's, that's barely two 12 foot lanes. And as I mentioned, no shoulders whatsoever, not paved or graveled. Uh, this particular uh, project would take up the concrete road and pulverize that. The, the concrete that was uh, uh, pulverized would be used as base material. Uh, the road would be widened from 24 feet to 32 feet, and that would allow for two four-foot paved shoulders plus additional width of gravel shoulders. So it would greatly improve the quality of road. Uh, there's also a bridge that goes over the Little Bear River. Structurally, the bridge itself is it appears to be sound, but the parapets are, are crumbling. Uh, it's very narrow. I think it's only 27 feet wide. Uh, there would be a new uh, bridge in, constructed. Uh, it, it would be a precast box culvert, and it would be widened from 27 feet to 34 feet obviously making it much safer, particularly if you have a semi coming on that bridge. Uh, there's a little bit of storm sewer on, on the north end, excuse me, on the east end uh, that would uh, uh, collect water that uh, comes uh, through curb and gutter for about a block and then it goes into an open ditch. Uh, the curb and gutter is being provided by the city and there's no sidewalk. The intersection does uh, or, or the roadway does intersect Highway 8991 at a skew, which I, is not the ideal situation. Uh, Wellsville will need to work with UDOT and, and, and make sure that uh, UDOT is uh, on board with what they're doing and, and, and would approve it before the project could go forward. But this, this, is, a, this is another really, really good project. Uh, the next project is uh, Cache County. Those of you who are familiar with Mons Corner, I think most all of us are, there in beautiful downtown Benson. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an intersection that you approach that is very, very confusing. I know I take that on my bike quite often and it's kind of a white knuckled area. I'm not sure who's stopping and who's going. Uh, there, have been, uh, there, there have been some safety points awarded to this particular project, the only project that received safety points. There were a, a, a total of five points that were received. There were 10 total accidents. Seven were property damage only, which aren't gonna get you any points. There was one possible injury, which in most cases aren't gonna get you any points, but there was one minor injury, which did put them over the threshold and they did receive five points. They also received five points for congestion. Obviously the reconfiguration of that intersection, making it uh, so it isn't a big sweeping curve with intersecting streets from different angles. I think right now there are five, five different uh, uh, points of intersection. Uh, this would completely clean this up. Uh, but this project is just to purchase right of way. It's not to build the project, but to purchase the right of way. And uh, we did receive the 30% plans. And uh, once, it, once the right of way has been acquired, then they will come back and request funds, I'm sure, to, to help in the construction of this, of this intersection. So again, uh, this is the only project that received both safety and congestion points. The next project is Providence 100 South. I think everyone who was here last year is familiar with this project. The 100 South project is the one that they had issues with uh, <clears throat> adjoining property owners on whether or not they could uh, had uh, rights to uh, construct a road. That they, uh, but all, all of those issues have been resolved. Uh, and so they are now looking to construct this particular roadway and, and a, uh, I will mention that the right-of-way was uh, eventually purchased by, by Providence. Providence bought the right-of-way. They didn't use COG money like they originally planned on. They, they acquired the property themselves. Now they're looking for construction. Uh, this project goes from the 100 uh, East uh, in intersection and goes westward to about uh, 400 East, I believe. 
And at that point, Mayor? 200 West, which is Excuse me. Road. I said 100 East, didn't I? I was just on 100 East. I walked that the other day, so I'm sorry. So 200, County, West. 200 West. Thank you. Also a county road, and it's two blocks to the west. Which would be about 400 West. 400 West. And it intersects, or doesn't intersect, it abuts uh, a stop that comes up from Gateway Drive, which has a roundabout in it, and uh, heads east, and it would tie that in and complete the link from Gateway Drive up to 2nd West, which then continues further, further eastward. So it would completely uh, finish that road, right, uh, that road alignment. Uh, there is a, a cur curb and gutter plan, the entire length of the road, which is being paid for exclusively by Providence. There is uh, 37 feet of asphalt, uh, and uh, there, there's also sidewalk as, as part of the project. No safety points were awarded. This, this particular uh, project doesn't exist yet. The roadway doesn't exist. So there have been no crashes on it, and so no safety points. But it was awarded 10 points for congestion. Uh, it is, uh, as the modeling indicated, it, it will help with congestion, not uh, uh, obviously not on that road. Uh, it'll pick up traffic, but it will relieve congestion on adjoining roads. So it does, it, it did receive five points overall for congestion. Excuse me, 10 points, not five, but 10 points. Next project is Smithfield. Now Smithfield's project is probably the first project that's come before this body that is really designed to alleviate a safety problem. And it's probably the greatest safety problem that we've had since we've had the program. I think many of you, particularly if you're on the north end, are familiar where, where Lee's marketplace is and the traffic that comes in and out of there. Now, Lee's Marketplace is between 800 South and 10th South in uh, Smithfield. Uh, and much of the traffic will either go out to 8 South and try to get on Highway 91, or it'll come out the driveways from the shopping center and try to get on Highway 91. Uh, over the years, as uh, development has, uh, has increased, in that particular area, the safety issues have become greater. There are a lot of different turning movements. Uh, there have, in the last five years, there have been 20 accidents, one fatality, one serious injury uh, accident. And uh, there were also, let's see, how many more were there? Let's see. Total of 22, including one fatality, one serious injury, three minor injury, and uh, seven possible injuries. So uh, the, the, the problem with this particular stretch of road is that uh, traffic is coming into Smithfield at about 55 miles an hour. Sometimes it's faster than that, and people are anxious to get out on the highway, and sometimes they don't see the traffic coming or they take risks that they probably wish they hadn't taken. And so it's been an ongoing problem. Now, no safety points were awarded because this particular project is for the intersection and the road approaching the uh, highway. And uh, where, where it doesn't exist, there were no safety points granted to it, but yet it is a safety project. So I would imagine that's a, that's a point that, that Smithfield will drive home when they get into their presentation. Uh, but it would construct a 10th south, which goes over to 2nd east, which will eventually go to 2nd east. And 2nd east is the same as uh, uh, Wolfpack Way. If you're familiar with Wolfpack Way, that's been built by North Logan, and eventually will be uh, built by Hyde Park. Uh, the, uh, Second East will tie into it, or, or actually it's 250 East will tie into it. At that point, it will be called Bob Catway. At that point, it will be called Bob Catway. Okay. So we go Bob Catway. I don't know what Hyde Park's going to call it, but uh, North Logan calls it Wolfpack Way. Uh, <clears throat> this particular project has curb and gutter on both sides of, of 10th South with sidewalk 
and then there's a, a link that uh, which is 100 East, which ties it all together. That makes it possible for traffic within the shopping center to access the traffic light, which will be placed at 10th South. Uh, and uh, Smithville has been working with you, Dot, on on that. Uh, and this project, this project highlights the value of Hog because not everything can be scored with the different scenarios that come in. And this particular one kind of highlights that because the, the congestion, the accidents and everything is prior to this. And this is being put in to alleviate that whole area. But because of that, there's no specific data to say that there was an accident right there because this is what's going to alleviate congestion. And that's the value of the cog is to be able to look at that and bring these scenarios to light and then have that discussion and say, okay, what, what does make sense? Because not everything can be scored uh, relative to value, but it can at least highlight scenarios that can help us in that process. Um, and Hyde Park did let me know it's uh, it's going to be called Wolf Cat. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, in between. <laughs> uh, I might mention on all of the urban projects, I'm not going to uh, uh, restate it for each project. We did receive the 90% the, the plans from uh, as, as part of the application on each one of those projects. Uh, I will mention on 10th South, there's 45 feet of asphalt. And then on uh, 100 East, there's uh, 32 feet of asphalt without curb gutter or sidewalk. Uh, each one of these projects, by the way, uh, were reviewed by the technical, not the technical, but the executive committee. We met and uh, uh, mayors uh, uh, Drew. Uh, Drew and and uh, Mayor Young and Craig Butters, myself and Jeff brought these projects to those three mayors. They reviewed them for eligibility and deemed all of the projects that had been submitted as being eligible. I failed to mention that to begin with. Uh, the the next project is uh, the Logan project, which is 100 West. Uh, this project has a has a significant regional component to it. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with with uh, 100 West, it. Uh, it ends at 600 South, where if you were to continue, you'd, you'd run right into an LDS church. Uh, this particular project would uh, skirt the church, beginning back on 500 South, uh, which intersection, which, which is where it would begin, and it would skirt the church, relocating the 600 South intersection, uh, going southbound behind where the large office building is being built, uh, where Ellis equipment used to be. It crosses the Logan River and then ties into 100 South where it would continue southbound and, and then intersect into 8991. And that would make it possible then for traffic on 100 West to continue all the way south and tie into 8991 without having to come back out on the main street, which it currently has to do. Uh, as, uh, as a part of this project, Logan City is putting a lot of their own money into it. They are uh, making improvements to 600 South. Uh, it will no longer intersect the, the highway uh, and uh, and they are putting curb gutter and sidewalk throughout and they'll review each one of the uh, components of the project when they have their presentation. Uh, this particular project received 15 points for congestion. It's, uh, if, if you remember, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, one-way couplets and uh, other things that we can do to alleviate the, the congestion on Main Street, which seems to be our mantra. That's something we've tried to do ever since we've been organized. And, and this is just one additional piece of the puzzle once this is in place to help relieve the con congestion on Main Street. And, uh, and so it does receive 15 points, which is the maximum number of points you can receive for congestion. Uh, as for safety, uh, there, there were no safety points 
issued. But again, I did mention the fact that 600 South intersection with 8991, or excuse me, uh, yeah, with 8991 would be would would be done away with. I believe there were, I think there were a number of accidents there, and I didn't make note of that, or did I? There yeah, were there, two fatalities. There, there was actually ten crashes. Eight, eight of them were were uh, uh, property only. One was a possible injury, and the other one was a minor injury. And then, if you go back beyond five years, there was a couple fatalities. Okay, if you go back beyond the five years that we look at, which is 2015, if you go back beyond that, there, there were some some uh, fatalities. But again, the 600 South project is not actually the project that's being applied for. It is just a piece of it that they are doing themselves as part of this project. Therefore, it did not receive the benefit of, uh, of, of the scoring system. Uh, another very, very good project. Uh, the, the last project is the Nibley project. And I have to tell you, this is one of my favorite projects. Uh, on 3200 South, if you were to go out to 12th West, now 12th West is a project that originates on the west side of uh, the highway, eventually crosses the highway, and uh, uh, comes up on the east side and crosses 3200 South. It's a, it's a very narrow road. Uh, 1200 South is where, where, where it crosses uh, 3200, excuse me, 12th West, where it crosses 3200 South. 12th West is, is, is uh, very narrow. They did receive funding for a roundabout last year. I believe it was last year, Mayor, is that right? Funding for the roundabout at that uh, was all the way back to 2017. 2017. They did receive funding for for a round roundabout in that intersection, but for a number of reasons, they've had to relocate that uh, further to the west. And as a result, the, the the approach legs to that intersection also have to be realigned. And that's primarily what this project is. So they have the funding for the roundabout but they have right of way to acquire, they have reconstruction of one uh, of, of 1200 west, uh, both uh, uh, southbound and northbound legs. And eventually this will become the fourth leg of 10th west on the north end. It'll connect through here. Uh, it's, it's interesting as I sat out there and I watched the traffic on 3200 and there's quite a bit of traffic on on 12th West you'd be surprised how big a trucks are on 12th West uh, I think they're they're going up to to Miller's I believe is the majority of the traffic that I saw but I was watching semi trucks that were coming down 3200 south trying to make a right hand turn on the 12th West to go south to Hiram and it was almost impossible for them to make those turns. They would have to veer into oncoming traffic coming from the east and virtually bring traffic to a stop as they made their turn on the 12th West. And it didn't happen just once or twice, it happened every time there was a large truck. And, uh, and so the roundabout certainly is going to address that. And again, this project just moves that roundabout and improves the, the, the approach lakes to that roundabout. Uh, it did not receive any safety points. There were, I believe, a total of 18 crashes in this intersection, but they were all of them minor. Uh, they were all minor injuries or just property damage. And so it didn't raise to the level that would get them safety points, but certainly if you're going to have 18 crashes, there is uh, a safety component to it. There was one crash where I'm not sure what happened with the driver, but he blew through the intersection and crashed into, into a home. Knocked a woman off of her bed. She hurt her knee that eventually had to have treatment to it. But it just gives you an, uh, just a little bit of a flavor as to what, what is happening there. Uh, because it is such a, 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 a uh, tight intersection, I think that's the one thing that saves it from having major 
accidents because traffic has to go so slow in order to make turning movements there. Uh, so that that is the Nibley project. Uh, oh, if if I could go back just just for for one moment to the Logan project, I need to mention that uh, uh, it's actually two phases. What they're applying for this year is phase one. Phase one also includes the bridge over the Logan River. Second phase is estimated to be about of equal size or uh, equal cost. And uh, I think that, uh, that that pretty well winds up uh, the, the COG, not the COG, but the CTAX re review the projects. You have their scoring sheet. And uh, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to entertain them. Thank you, appreciate it. I'll also make note of Craig Butters, note if he's uh, attended virtually as well as uh, Mayor Flint from uh, Hyde Park, and also filtering text messages as needed with the uh, information. So, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, well, with that, we will uh, we will jump directly into our 2020 application project presentation. These are designed to be 10 minutes each. Uh, there can't be questions and basic stuff, but uh, we're going to try to roll through this as, as reasonably as possible. Jeff, I'll turn the time over to you to kind of structure. So uh, we will go in the order of how they are listed on the website, which by the way is no uh, measure of prioritization, it's simply what we number the projects. We'll just go down the list. Uh, hopefully you can see that. I'll call it out. Mendon's first and then Amalga. Uh, if we could have the presenters come forward, we'll have you stand right next to that uh, desk so they can see you as well as see the screen. And we'll have you use this microphone or maybe that microphone if you don't mind. Uh, I think you need to turn it on there, Eric. Okay. Can you hear? Yes. There we go. Okay. So, did you guys bring hand wipes and microphones? We can pass it. How do you want to handle that? I just it, thought just, the mic. Yeah, I, thought, I saw it coming. Oh, yeah, yeah. super. All right. No do you want to do you want to run that for me, Jeff? Either way, you, either, if you want to do the up arrow, you can do it yourself. Go ahead. I'll let you okay. do that. That saves one hand anyway. Thank you. <laughs> okay, my name is Eric Dursauer. I'm the uh, the city engineer from Mendon. Again, like Jim said, this is a chip and soap project. Go ahead and advance that. It, it, uh, it involves a 2017-2018 ship sale of, of uh, a project completed by COG funding back in those years. And so we reconstructed the roads, we rebuilt them, we widened them, we fixed them. So right now we have fairly new asphalt on those roads that need to be protected and, and uh, Increase their their resistance and those kind of things. So you can see down at Fifth North, my center line spot, Fifth North and Fourth North with 2017 projects, and down at First East with 2018 projects. So that's kind of it in a nutshell as far as where the ship is going to be placed on here. So, Jeff, I request that if he can stand possibly on the other side. Okay, let's see where we got. Can you see where it's at? I apologize. It's good. Okay, yeah, that might be better. Okay, there we go. Sorry I'm about that. Myself. That's scary. Okay, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> okay, next slide. Is that the whole road that's in orange on that photo? Say, say again, sorry. Is that the entire road that's colored in orange? Yes, that's correct. Uh huh. Yeah. So this 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 fifth north up to fourth north is 2017. All first east was 2018 project. Funded by Cognite, which we acknowledge and recognize. So again, purpose and need, we want to, we want to increase along the road, we want to have a greater skid resistance. Water uh, runoff, uh, keep the water from penetrating the roads. And then of course, as the sun deteriorates the asphalt, that's probably the worst enemy to our asphalt is the sun. It beats it all day long. So. And we will notice by the picture right through in there, the indigenous people enjoy chip sales, so we want to encourage that. So, uh, next slide. Again, same thing, project scope. 
Chips Hill, everything in orange all the way down through. Now it's a small project down here on the south end by uh, Third South. That when the 2015 project beat was a small section of repair, it it, uh, it did quite match the 2018 project. So we had to come in and take about 20 feet of that up and fix kind of a bump in the road and kind of smooth that out. So that's that's the tear that whole small project in there, and then we go back and chip to the whole thing once again. And uh, in a prior year, we've entertained the idea of using county funds and county chips, chips so true. So we're still open to that if it's a reduce of the cost. So uh, next slide. Go ahead and first, first one more time here. So we figure design, construction, engine, those kind of things are about $7,500. Construction about $123,300. Contingency. About sixty six hundred dollars. We don't anticipate too much on a ship sale. Hopefully, this goes smoothly. Uh, total project cost about one thirty seven. We requested about one hundred twenty seven seven from COD to help us finance the project. You know, some of these communities that are smaller don't have that kind of resource to do this. So we appreciate the opportunity to, to request money. Go ahead, and next slide. As you can see, as you look down these roads. They've been, they're, they're good services. They're, they're in fair decent shape. We just want to get that ship sealed to increase the longevity. So we have next slide, Jeff. This is this is the one looking down uh, towards the highway on the south end. Again, it's been, it's, it's fair to be very small. That's okay. Maybe turn the other mic off. Okay. Okay. So and then, and then looking, Looking east, again, good asphalt, good shape, no cracks. It's been good shape, no rambling at all. So we want to give them chips. Go next slide, yeah. And this is an aerial photo on Google. You can see the 2017 project, what we've done there. Just, just want to get covered up. Keep, keep it uh, life long. Next slide. Any questions? Pretty straightforward project. Yes, Jim. I've got one for you, Eric. Um, uh, first of all, for, for those who may not know, 500 North, just for orientation, is, is the Minden Road that goes to Logan. Uh, I did have a question on striping. Did you make allowances for striping? I noticed there's school striping and there's a lot of striping along there. I wasn't sure if you made allowances. We for did, that. yeah. It's okay. in that schedule. Yes, we did. Thank you. Any more questions? Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's it. He's back up. Oh, you're back up. I wondered why you were standing there. <laughs> Thought you were going to sing some show tunes. So let's see, you're doing a Malga, right? I'm going to try to keep mind that shit. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. You bet. So Malga, as Jim mentioned, is it's a 5900 North Street, and it's it's been beat to death by traffic, uh, by tractor trailers, tractors, all kind of things too. So as as we went out and looked at the road out there, you can go to the next slide too. Yeah. We went out there, out there to kind of assess and evaluate what needed to happen out there. And we took Mary Wood with us and, and there's there's some damage out there. That road's that road's in has some areas that are Fairly rough, uh, fairly degraded. The, the side railing is uh, running is, is pretty bad in some areas too. So we tried to go down through it and just figure out where it's cracking, uh, where the potholes are, and, and where the shoulders are bad. What's out of gear? And what's what's too narrow? As Jim mentioned, the radius are fairly narrow in there too. They do they do cut those fairly short of the truck. So next slide, Jeff. So on this slide, you can kind of see where we're going to pull. Rises the red. The black is asphalt repair. We're going to pull uh, and, and just pass those areas the best we can. Now we may we may increase and decrease pulverization versus patching. We'll have to kind of, kind of see how that material looks. Uh, again, we try to quantify as best we could with uh, with the visual, and then taking a taking a hammer, and kind of kind of pound that one, then kind of speak find out there. So, and then the entire road gets chip sealed and, and a seal coat on it. Fox so one that once probably gets done. So again, it's it's, it's another just a reconstruction. We may we have some areas of widening on it where it's kind of degraded in towards the center of the road. So we want we want to make this functional once again, as well as is uh, structurally 
uh, sound for future traffic as it goes through there. So, Jeff, next slide. We estimate 66790 uh, for construction. We put a 30 in our dollars of contingency, which is not a lot. I probably should have put it in the morning. We figured about 30 bucks contingency. Total project cost about 78 for. So we're requesting about 729 for for funding from the call agency to help us finance this project. Okay, Jeff. As you can see in these these slides here, we've tried to identify where it's rutting, where it's potholing, where it's alligating, where the shoulders are kind of lost on there, where it cracks longitudinally. You'll see some alligator cracking on this left slide. That's kind of a rough picture, but if you look close, you kind of see that in there. So the road, the roads are pretty rough shape. We anticipated maybe, maybe we thought about taking the pulverization and taking it down the entire road and doing the whole thing, but that cost pretty got, got uh, cost prohibitive, I guess. So we tried to address this to make the best use of the funds that we were asking for. Jeff, next slide. Any questions on this project then? Let me answer them. Jim. Do you have adequate funding? Do you think that you could flare those radiuses if you needed to? Yeah, I or think, could? yeah, we all, yes, we do. Okay. Yeah, I think we could, yeah. yeah. Any more questions? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is uh, Wellsville. What is it? Right there, I was just going to. Oh, actually. Okay. Do you want to do the hammer? What's that? I was. Oh, come on over. I'll officially grab it. Chris, do you want me to be your flipper or do you want to do it? I'll do it. Okay. Just, I believe it's just the up air on. Okay. Thank you. I should act all technical, right? I don't think I do it. We were probably one of those guys. Here, it's mostly healthy. Okay. Oh, well, it smells like it's. Oh, this is still going to work. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Chris Bramingholt. I'm the city engineer for Wellsville. Uh, Scott Wells, the city manager, is here tonight. Of course, Mayor Bates is here. Chris, can we have you step back just a little bit so you're on the camera? Push it up. There you go. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you want to stand? Can you see? Me? Yeah, I think there's good. Sorry, can I mean, yeah, side there. Am I good? Yep, you're good. All right, I'm here to discuss uh, this 400 North Widening project for Wellsville City. Jeff, I might be too far away. I'll do it. I think you're gonna have to do it. <sighs> Jim kind of already went over the location, and we looked at that on the aerial photo, but. Uh, 400 North is, is shown here, depicted here in the CMPO uh, transportation document, shown as a collector road. You want to go to the next slide? This is uh, what we're calling phase one. And it would continue, the road phase two would continue up to the state highway, which is our center street. Uh, but the, the project we're proposing is right here uh, between the US 89 and, and 300 East in Wellsville. Okay. It's backwards. Whoops. This uh, depicts uh, the use that this road gets from county residents, from um, areas in Menden, Petersboro, and everywhere in the county from Wellsville Elementary out the Valley View Highway. It gets a lot of heavy use from the high school kids in particular. They use it as a, a route to avoid the longer route that takes the state highway. Um, and uh, heading over to Ohio and more into some parts, Logan, and the other places like that. But it is a shorter route than staying on state highway. And that's why it gets so much use from areas north of Wellsville. Go ahead. So current road conditions. This is our, our bridge on the Little Bear River. And you can see the, the guardrails there, the parapets are deteriorating. Go ahead with the next slide. It's a little better view of it. Uh, this bridge needs to be replaced. Go ahead, Jeff. The road surface. Um, as Jim mentioned, this has got an old concrete road underneath it. Um, concrete roads under asphalt tend to make it a little rougher just because they move and, and 
they are contributing to the de deteriorating asphalt, but uh, just the, the age of it, it's, it's falling apart. Uh, right now, this road is closed to heavy vehicles. You said you uh, you had a semi there. Yeah. It wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, most of that heavy traffic would come from the gravel pits located in the county. Go we'll ahead to the next slide. Uh, narrow shoulder, portions of this have a, just basically no shoulder at all. It's, you can see gravel there, but it's sloped off um, fairly steeply. Jim. Narrow travel lanes. I think Jim might have found a place that was 24 feet wide. Most of this I think, is 22 feet wide. It's pretty narrow um, and it, it varies through it, but it is narrow. And passing other vehicles in particular, if you come across a large vehicle, it's, um, it's pretty tight. We have some access and drainage issues up along Highway 89. This is where you come off of the highway right by Tom's service there on the left. And you can see the drainage problems that we have. At certain times, and I didn't capture it in this slide, but there can be vehicles and wreckers and different things parked in all uh, sorts of directions along this road. It's a hazard as cars come off uh, for sight and uh, just general congestion. Good job. This is a view of the same section looking back toward the highway. This road is currently not in the center of the right of way. We have a 99 foot right of way out here, so it's, it's pretty large. But as you look uh, down the road this way, the center of this right of way is actually along the left, left edge of that pavement. So what are we proposing to do? First of all, of course, the bridge at uh, the Little Bear River will be removed and replaced with a, a precast concrete, including new, uh, new walls. And, uh, go ahead, Jeff. Um, that, as mentioned, that old concrete road is in that underneath that asphalt. And a couple of years ago, we had um, a process called rebelization. I'm sure you guys have seen it. I, I saw it out on the freeway. They bring in a machine that, that busts the concrete roadway up right in place. And, and that's what we do here again. We had good success with it. We take off the old asphalt. We bust up the concrete in place and, and use it as a base. Hey, Jeff. We also uh, propose a uh, new four foot wide paved shoulder, which would be striped as a bike lane. In addition to that, um, well, I'm jumping ahead. This is the travel lanes one. We're widening the travel lanes to 12 feet. If you want to go ahead. We missed that. The, the four foot paved shoulder for the bikes and a four foot gravel shoulder um, just for safety. And then the 12 foot uh, travel lanes. And then up on the east end around Tom service and, and where the homes are, we were proposing curb and gutter uh, through that area to help with the drainage issues and try and maintain some semblance of order <laughs> with parking along the highway um, and to control access from those homes and from Tom's service. This is just an overview of the project. Can you go back one, Jeff? Up here on the east end, or west end, you can see the existing road is in the center of the, the right of way. It's a more narrow right of way, but as it comes around the van, it transitions to where the road is, the edge of the existing road is right there in the center of the right of way. We do have a little bit of wetlands in the area, but it's less than a tenth of an acre, so the impact is minimal and committing um, shouldn't be too difficult. This shows that area, like Tom's service, where we're proposing curb and gutter to help with the drainage, to help with access and to improve the safety of the parking along there. We are um, showing uh, striping there at the intersection. This whole thing would be striped with uh, bike lanes, as mentioned before, in a center lane. Um, but at the intersection, we have a through and, and turn lanes and receiving lane, of course. Um, I did talk to Todd Finland said at UDOT, I talked to him again last week. He's going to provide me a letter. They're not going to require us to realign that intersection. Uh, this, is the, this is the cost estimate. The cost of the project is $1.1 million. 
you guys should have that in your packets. And just as a summary, if you want to go to the next one, Jeff. Uh, so this road is heavily used by residents in the county and by residents in the cities north of Wellsville. I don't have, I can't quantify it, but I would guess more than half, well more than half is, is traffic from outside of Wellsville using it as a bypass road. Um, the project will improve safety by widening the travel lanes and providing uh, shoulder to pave and gravel shoulder. The inter intersection with Highway 89 will be safer because we'll center the, the road in the right of way, get it farther away from Tom's service and provide uh, striping movement lanes. Capacity of the road will be improved by widening the travel lanes, adding bike lanes, and opening the road to commercial vehicles, which as mentioned, mostly would be gravel trucks from the gravel pits in the county. And Wellsville City, we feel that this road, because of the heavy use from outside of the city, is a good candidate as a partnership with Wellsville City and the, the county. So with that, any questions? Did you go uh, southwest on that road a lot? You can address that as well. That would be in phase two. That's phase two. Mm -hmm. Did you see any moths, any wetlands along there? There were there, we would be impacting less than a tenth of an acre of wetlands. So we would need permitting from the Corps of Engineers, but if you stay under a tenth, that's that's fairly easy to do. So what about stormwater? We do have the curb and gutter up there to handle stormwater coming off that where it is a problem up on the east end. Um, it'll drain back along down below, it just drains and channels alongside the swales alongside the roadway back to the little there. It does go into a storm sewer, which then dumps into an existing ditch, if yeah. I remember right. Right, which continues to the, to the west. Yep, that's right. Anybody else? If I'm not mistaken, Mayor, this is the, Wellsville has never received any copy from is that correct? That's correct. So, Okay, thank you. Oops, I'll grab one and do this one. Okay. Uh, this will work if you need it down. I think I gave it bad advice. So. Okay, I should have been concerned. All right, I'll slide the job. All right, Right. Which way is down, Jeff? <laughs> It'll work? It's not? I don't want to spoil the next slide. Uh, we'll find out. Okay. Um, Matt Phillips was hey, Matt, the stand. public works director. Just little, just not in the I there you go. go. How's that, I, th I appreciate um, the opportunity to come and present our projects. I think that it was well explained um, beforehand, so I don't have that many slides, but I will be happy to answer any questions. And uh, again, location for any of you that are not familiar with Mons Corner is, um, the slide over there shows the little dot and an arrow, and it falls right on the CMPO boundary. So we're right on the verge of the urbanized and the rural section. So because most of it's in the urbanized, then that's why we're not going after the rural funds this year. So this project, it will be with the urban funds, correct, Jeff? Here's another slide just kind of showing the general intersection. If we look on the other side, similar to Wellsville's, most of the traffic that goes through Mons Corner is not to Amalga, but it's to Newton, it's to Clarkston, it's to Benson. It's all the way from Idaho. It's one of the few roads that, that brings that northwest side of Cache County into Logan. So if you don't want to go through Smithville, um, that's the road you're going to take, which gets a lot of traffic. For the county, this is probably one of our higher ADT roads. I think Jeff had an estimate in his was about 4,000. Doesn't seem like a lot to Bill and others of you guys that have you know, 35,000 cars a day, but for the county, that's quite a bit. So um, it, it is heavily used. It's a uh, road. 
So this is kind of an aerial view of that intersection. And as they talked about, it has some operational deficiencies. There's a lot of legs, a lot of conflict points. And so that's one of our goals is to realign that. So it's regionally significant based on the people that are using it. It serves a lot of different communities throughout Cache County. It is a minor arterial. It has multiple legs that we're trying to orient in a different fashion. It has poor geometrics for the speed limit that it's posted at. That curve is not where it should be. It's not up to standard. So our goal is to realign that. Um, traffic estimate, based on what Jeff did the other day, it's expected to double. And we have had quite a few accidents. So, this is a picture looking at one of the more recent accidents in, in its current state. So when I took over, or when I came to the county about a year ago, it was shortly after that, that um, someone took out the guardrail. And so the whole start of this project began with, how can we fix this? This is a common occurrence. We get people sliding off, running through the guardrail. So the county is currently working on plans to improve the drainage, fill in these ditches, and to make sure that all the utilities in this intersection are taken care of. And because of that, we decided, hey, let's put these utilities where it makes sense for uh, the realignment. So the county is doing the phase one project of the drainage and infrastructure to fill in some of this ir old irrigation ditch that has been currently piped. Phase two is going to be the geometrics and realignment of the intersection. Phase three, if uh, Logan stopped at the county line, is they read it Airport Road. So our plan is to reconstruct that part of Airport Road. And then future phase would be to go from Mons Corner into Benson. So in order for us to complete phase two, we need to go out there and purchase the right of way that will allow us to put in the utilities in the correct location and plan accordingly for the future phases. So here's a look at our proposed realignment in the right of way that we're looking at purchasing. So the main thing you will see is instead of a nice sharp corner on Airport Road 3400 North, it will be a more gradual sweeping one that meets current standards. We're trying to realign all the legs to have similar points of intersection to reduce those conflicts, potentially a right lane through into Amalga and bring this other intersection back. So the hatched area is the right of way that we're looking to purchase through this project. It's about 150,000 square feet or about three and a half acres is what we're looking to purchase. Any questions? So are you going to unleash these spaces? Uh, something Logan didn't do very well on the engine. Cycling is very heavy along there. Correct. It wasn't addressed very well. And, and it was Logan put there to make wide a little bit, but not really. The plan would be to make sure that this is accommodates biking through the shoulder, through striping. However, we haven't, where our plans are only 30%, I can't tell you how wide those lanes will be or how that will be signed or striped, but we would like to make sure. The Sam Fellow Road all the way from Airport Road out is a high bike traffic area. If you drive it very often, you'll realize that. And so in our future designs, they would accommodate biking. Any other questions? Thank you, appreciate it. Providence. Hey, Providence. Yeah, All right, well, do I need a microphone? I do so that we yes. can hear it online, right? Yep. All right. And then you might have to.
Yeah. Can you see on that one? Yep. Sorry, he's, guys. yeah, I think he's good. Am I in the right spot? Yep. You're so approved online. You're good to go. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate being here. Uh, my name is Ryan Stoll. I'm the city manager for, uh, for Providence City. I'm not the engineer, but we do have our engineer here. Um, we have our mayor here as well. And uh, if I get anything wrong, they'll correct me, um, which, is, which happens. So that's fine. Um, I will, uh, first of all, tell you our project. It, it uh, outlined fairly well, um, but our project is along 100 South. Many of you have uh, previously, last year, if you were in, involved, you heard about our project. Um, I personally, first of all, I personally have met with nearly every one of the property owners on site at their home um, to resolve any of those concerns. So you shouldn't get any of that. So if you approve our project this time around, we shouldn't have any of, uh, any of the hassles and headaches that we had last time. So anyway, um, we are looking at a few things. Um, you'll notice that, uh, well, first of all, our project, um, we're asking one point, almost 1.2 million uh, for the project. Um, yeah, that's what the project is. Our ask is 987,000. We're putting in 17.7%. And as was mentioned, we've already bought the right of way that was um, that 50 foot right of way that was in question last time. We purchased that and resolved those issues. So um, keep in mind this project that in this area, we have had um, the roundabout here and the roundabout here funded through. Uh, through COG and uh, and part of the um, the gateway um, part of that uh, gateway drive. Um, so this is a, this is as mentioned was was mentioned. This is the completion of uh, of this. So we're uh, we're finishing off with that connection from the county road in the gateway drive, and uh, you'll notice. Um, so at this point, a few things on here, just to give you an idea. Um, grant application, we were through the last one. It funded a county project with us being able to do that. Um, we currently have no uncompleted projects with COG. Uh, we have completed any of the projects we've previously requested. Um, it has been on our city, um, master, city master transportation plan for nearly 20 years. And uh, so, Anyway, just talking about safety, this is one thing. Um, as we look about safety, we identified each of the different accidents. So what this is gonna do is this is, a, this is an alleviator road. It's a, um, a lot of congestion in the area it has created accidents on both of our 300 South and 100 North. Um, just to give an idea of that, that area, if, uh, if we could alleviate some of that congestion. Um, there was 165 accidents in this area in the last five years, three fatalities, 42 injuries, and 120 non-injuries in, in, this, in this particular area and stretch. This would, would be in the middle of those, alleviating the, the traffic that would be flowing on those other two roads. Um, so anyway, um, the, the road has been closed since 2007. It was open this year, so it's been opened. Um, but because it was closed, we don't get any safety points as mentioned. We don't get any safety points, new road, um, no statistics on the actual road. But if we could have taken a calculation, if the calculation considered um, the other pieces of this, we would have had full um, full points for, for safety if we could have if we could have taken it account, into account um, the where it's going to impact, if we had gotten those safety points, we would have been the top scoring project. Um, so at this point, keep in mind the uh, what we're looking at is both uh, congestion and safety. Kind of give you a couple of pictures just to kind of give visuals. I find visuals to be as helpful to the story as what I'm going to tell you. Um, so you can see. There isn't a way to pass either one of those vehicles um, with that. These were pictures taken with, the, with CRH equipment. 
you can see that there's a there's a variety of different uh, activities going on. You can see the traffic that's uh, proceeding on the road. And I like to be brief, and so I open it up for any questions. So there you are. Any questions? Whether I missed anything, no, I did. So go ahead. Something I want to add uh, this year, Logan City has put in a grant application for 100 West to take traffic off of Main Street. This project, the Gateway Drive project, north and south, what it did is it connected with Logan City on 100 East at the time. What this project did for Logan City took a significant amount of traffic off Main Street in Logan. So the connection between Logan City and Providence is Gateway Drive. This is the very last segment. This completes that. It's a two block segment. This is construction only. Uh, I think the pictures tell a good story. It's pretty narrow. It's also not even, it, it's, it's a gravel road. We put chip and seal on it. Uh, so it could be functional road for two or three years, but these are for construction funds only. By the way, as the county council asked us to go through the public hearing process, there was all this controversy last year, as Ryan mentioned, he's talked to all of the property owners. We paid for the right of way. Uh, we're good to go right now. Um, we had a public hearing and there were zero public comments. There were no objections to this project. So as Ryan mentioned, the political issues, the controversy, I know every mayor heard from the half a dozen residents on this street, as well as all of the county council members were lobbied directly to keep this road closed. That's all been put to bed. As far as the property owners are concerned, they say, let's get this road built and move forward. Do you have a time frame? Um, just out of curiosity, look around about the you know, time frame on the pod planning when that was, because I know it was two different projects. Uh, Sorry, uh, I know that's going that, that might be better for Jen. I apologize. The, the south end was 2015. The funds were awarded, okay. including the south roundabout. Jeff, you probably know about the other route. That's 2013. The north portion of. I'm not yeah, sure I can remember. It all blurs to me. Tw in the 2013 time frame, I think, though. That was the north portion. Yeah. And I think this highlights that one of the one of the rules that we have in the law is that the projects have some form of a scalability in a base scenario. And I think this is a good part of the federal example of, of that scenario that, that each one had its own area that it helped that later on could lead into additional phases that would continue to help, but it allowed it to stand alone, recognizing that sometimes it might be years in the process of COG working together to, to do different phases. Yeah, the future plans for Gateway Drive eventually go all the way through Providence, go through Millville and connect to the high school. And again, take more traffic off uh, the highway. Thank you, appreciate it. No other questions? Okay, Smithfield. So I'm uh, John Powell, I'm the project engineer for the Smithville 1000 South project on uh, US 91. And then we have uh, Clay Bodily, who is the city engineer, and he'll help present as well. All right, to get some uh, background on the project to explain what's going on. Uh, so 1000 South is this intersection uh, down here. Um, up here is where Lee's Market is. Uh, previously, uh, we, the city had applied for some funding for this intersection to do a signal. It was warranted by UDOT. Um, however, through discussions, uh, it was determined that the best location would be to put the signal at 1000 South. By putting it 1000 South, it meets the uh, US 91 corridor agreement that's been signed with UDOT and with uh, several cities along this corridor from Smithville down through North Logan and the, I think that may even go into Logan. 
A uh, couple of points on that. Uh, the improvements on the West Lake is just putting in, widening a little bit on the south side within the existing right way uh, to add a right turn lane in coming into the intersection. There's a picture that shows that a little better. On the east side, it's a new roadway construction that goes from the highway, then would continue over to 100 east. And uh, Jim had mentioned the width on that, and then we would have a smaller, narrower section that would come up to what's a 900 south approximately, and Smithfield that's 100 east. What that would do is that road would continue and extend all the way up to, there's a signalized intersection at six south, and uh, people would be able to use that road coming north and south behind Lee's. Uh, there's a lot of uh, new development that's happening in this area. So one of the benefits of this project is providing some economic development that would extend further south and also a little bit further east, and then it would provide some for more development on the west side. There's uh, the future extension. So future phases would take uh, the thousand south, extend it all the way over to what's 250 east. And all the way over to, I think the master plan shows at least to 1,000 east. The intersection, the signal, UDOT is helping to fund that. They warranted this location and they are also at the same time seeking funding sources from some state funding, some safety funds. So they've got, I think, two or three different funding sources that they're getting some money from. Their improvements would put in the signal and it would add in, a, there's a little bit of a right turn lane that comes off that would be extended and then do some more improvements at that intersection. All right, next slide. So what's the purpose of this project? Like some of the other projects that they mentioned, safety is, is the biggest one. It's to improve the safety between 1000 South and 800 South intersection. Uh, the, we've talked about the agreement that's been warranted by UDOT. UDOT is uh, seeking funding, and uh, I've got 700000 in there, but it's closer to $775,000 that they are applying to this project for the signalized intersection portion of that, and also to add in a raised median using one of the funding sources. Uh, we talked about inter, uh, the economic development and the interconnectivity. I'm going to go back up to this slide and talk about uh, one of the things that UDOT is looking at with their safety funding they're applying for is that they would put in a raised median that would go from 8th south all the way down to 1000 south. What that would do is eliminate left turns off of the highway or onto the highway from these uh, commercial uh, development area, uh, which is the biggest improvement for safety and that's where a lot of the accidents have happened. So this slide, there's uh, two different pictures that shows the accidents. So this one here is a depiction that each dot shows an accident that happened along the corridor from this is 8 south and this is 900 south. So not even all the way down to nine or to 10 south, but just in front of this area. Out of those accidents, um, this here is just a dot that has numbers. So the, like that location, there's 15. Uh, this was the fatality and... The, I think the blue are fatalities or some of the suspected injury, but this shows this is the last 10 years data that I, re, I received from UDOT, but there's a, a fatal, one a fatal accident, four serious injury, seven minor injury, and then 22 uh, possible injuries. So existing, there's a, in the last 10 years, 75 crashes uh, in that area, 160 vehicles, uh, the one of the problems is there aren't a lot of gaps of traffic as they come from the, the last signals at Hyde Park Lane. So by the time the traffic gets up to uh, the, uh, this location, 1000 South and up to uh, 600 South, there aren't any gaps as traffic spread out. So it's just a continuous flow. And so people are trying to shoot through no gaps. Uh, there's a lot of uncontrolled accesses with that median. It would be added in that was going to control the accesses. So they'd be right in and right out only. Uh, they would provide gaps in the traffic between uh, the signal at 1000 South and, eight and 6 South, and then provide alternate routes. But, 
<clears throat> besides the, the safety, which is a big point, it's one of the few projects that actually has a fatality. Um, there are other points that go along with this project. Um, for one, the property is already acquired. Uh, as you look along this, um, where the pointer is, that property has been acquired. The mayor of Smithfield was able to finalize that this year, so we're, we're not looking for property acquisition. There is a stormwater component in this as well. Uh, Logan, North Logan, Hyde Park have all, as part of the floodplain, uh, flood prevention, have seen the problems with getting across the state road with stormwater. So there is a stormwater component in this as well. And the utilities on the east side will also be part of that stormwater component. So the with the uh, safety, the stormwater, and as John mentioned, there's also an economic development point in this uh, development. So that's why we're asking for uh, help in funding this. Um, it is uh, safety, even though it wasn't awarded the points, is a very big point in, in this. If, if you looked at those um, accidents, you can see the uh, improvement in not only the um, accidents down here, but in front of Lee's as well. Any questions? So back on the accident thing, the safety data. So it, it, yeah, this project didn't receive any of the safety points because the location is at, Oops. Um, with the location being right here, there are no accidents here, but the accidents are to the north. And by putting in that raised median, it's gonna prevent a lot of those accidents. And uh, by running the numbers, uh, if, you assume, if you were to assume all the traffic would then be using this signal and not be um, pulling out, then the number was, I think it was like three. So you get the, the maximum safety points by doing that. You're not gonna be able to assume all those accidents, but it was high, definitely high enough that it would get the, the full points uh, on the accident information. Question. And then summary, go oh, ahead, yeah, question? Just back to Matt, this doesn't make sense with you. I think it's cleared up my mind. Uh, what you're saying then is you're gonna improve the road where there's no commercial aspect to it at all. Going up further by these and stuff, where all the commercial activity is taking place with all the buildings going on. But yet, because some past agreement, you're going to try to stick to that when really it needs to be addressed and say, no, we don't need it right here at 1000 South. We need to back up our leads. We need to work with UDOT and get it there instead of back up. Because there's no commercial aspect right there. there. Well, there is commercial aspects. Right now, there's commercial being built. So there's commercial up here, and it's now extending all the way down to this intersection. That's under it's under construction right now. That's really causing the issue. It already existed at 800 South. Yes. That's, so that's I can't understand why you want not to address that now. That can be future. That could be a phase two. Yeah. So, but you not by adding it to Okay, so on any given day, you can stand at uh, 8 South, and the traffic comes from 6 South all the way back to 6, or from 6 to 8. That's backed up going north down? It's backed up going north down. Right. Yeah, so. And you can back it up even more with the 12 planes in there. No. No, you don't, you don't want the light on 10th because of the traffic that would back up all the way to 8th. So the way you don't, you don't, but they, for them to have optimal um, flow of traffic, if you have signals too close together, then you end up having the, a more delays in traffic. So if you don't can spread out the signal locations, then it maximizes the... I don't disagree. Then it maximizes the flow of the traffic. And so that's why you don't has... Part of the, inter the interlocal agreement has determined where do we want signals in the future. So one is at 6 South, there's one at uh, 10 South, another one I think is around 4200 South or 4600 South, I don't remember the exact location, and then the next signal is already in place at Hyde Park Lane, and so that's that's spreading out those signals. So by putting, UDOT doesn't want to put it at 8 South because then it's too close to the intersection of, uh, of 6 South, and so that's why it's down at 10 South. 
So the reason, so the benefit comes by now is that UDOT, with them, with UDOT funding to put the signal in here, is that they're going to put in the raised median through here, which is going to eliminate any traffic that's coming southbound won't be able to make a left turn into Lee's. Anybody going northbound won't be able to make a left turn into these develop the development on the the west side. They would have to go up to the signalized intersections, or they'd have to come up here and make the turn. Exactly. And so that the benefit is, is that then you're preventing a lot of cross traffic through here. Is that they're going like anybody going southbound from Lee's. The idea is that they're going to use this 100 East Roadway. Uh, there is a private access that they may. I'm not sure if they'd be able to go through there or not, but they would come down to this signal and use the signalized intersection then to continue further south. I'm somebody who uses that all the time. Okay. So I we all use it. We all use it all the time. It, it is also going to create spaces. Yeah. Um, as you stop the traffic here, they'll be. Um, what yeah. you're saying is you're going to force people to go to uh, 1000 South, turn east. Go back down the leads. Any anywhere from or they could come up at six south. They could turn at six south, come down one hundred east, or they could turn at eight south and eight south come is in. still a problem because trying to get across there it looks very difficult as well. Yeah, but there will be the the benefits that by putting the signal here, you'll start getting gaps that you don't have right now. The traffic never ends on this street. If you're over here on Lee in Lee's parking lot or on eight south and you're trying to make a left turn. You go south on that highway, you'll sit there or you'll take a chance to try and get out in front of cars coming both directions. I don't disagree with that. You have to agree one is not the same. But to me, a phase one would be a with the summer sheet on there. And but that other that other side street, a lot of people will use that as well. The one that's right behind uh comes out of Lee's and it's right behind Arby's and it'll be behind the car, car wash and it'll connect to 10th and south and people will be able to get to the light and make left turns. And what you're bringing up has been brought up multiple times. As a matter of fact, last year when Smithville looked at submitting it, it was looked at eight, and then when UDOT came back, right. that was the whole form of discussion was the, the placement now has as growth happens, it's got a road that can utilize a full stop both ways, whereas the other one, it's a one, it basically got a three way stop that it creates because the other side is just a development. So it doesn't have uh, through traffic. And, and when they presented their model, that was their argument. And then to, just to kind of add to that, if I just so we kind of understand that agreement that was done, there was, there was a certain amount of lights that were agreed yeah. to try to maximize but yet limit stop of traffic and i believe this is the last one is it not in that 4200 uh, 4200 or 4600 there's one okay, more so there's between one more so there's one more that that can be can be placed and so you dot um not that they won't change it but they're pretty pretty strict on that and there's a lot to it on because they're basically saying they'll only allow so much as it comes in until I don't know until more development. Obviously, in Logan, we have a lot more. So I assume as more development comes, that would be readdressed. I, I think it's valid to at least ask that or understand as a cog that that would have to be readdressed eventually because as more as more things come about from businesses, that then would would apply different than what was originally agreed on the lights. Yeah, and you have to keep in mind too that the agreement was signed back in the nineties. And the uh, communities of North Logan, Hyde Park, and Smithfield have planned their road networks around the location of those traffic lights. And uh, uh, they know where the traffic lights are supposed to be. They're spaced so that they can be timed properly. And they have designed their major roads to go to those traffic lights. 8 South is not one of them. There's been a lot of clamor over the last 15 years to put a light at 8 South I can guarantee you the mayor has taken the brunt of that. But the fact of the matter is that is not the place to put a traffic light, even though you, you could signalize every single uh, intersection in Smithville. But, but there's wisdom in the things that they're doing. And putting it at 10 South, I can tell you, is the best place to put that light. Well, we're all here. We can find out in a few years. We'll know soon enough. 
something does happen, uh, how accurate their uh, wisdom is. Is that right? How many years? Smith Hill City did hold a public hearing on, on, on this slide, and the city council discussed it, and, uh, and they're all in favor of the location. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad Jim brought that up because as mayor, I was all in favor of the light at 8 South, but uh, everyone else uh, told me that uh, that's not the best place for it, and a lot of reasons why. So. They converted me, so I'm on board for that. Any other questions? <coughs> Thank you, appreciate it. Okay, Logan City. All right, we are uh, happy to be here. So thanks for sitting through this. I'm Sam Ott. I'm a project manager at Logan City. I'm the project manager for the Wonder West project. I'm going to try to go through this somewhat quickly so that you can have time for answer or questions and answers. So um, just keep that in mind. All right. Um, there we go. All right. So today we're going to talk about the Wonder West Quarter project. Uh, the main things I want to hit on are where the project is, our project scope, what's the need for the project, the project cost, and then any questions you have at the end. Okay, project location. So um, as Jim mentioned earlier, this is phase one of a two-phase project. Um, many of you are aware with the new Adams Development Building that's going to be built on the old Ellis property. Um, that is about the, the line in the sand between phase one and phase two. Um, this project will connect 100 West at 500 South to the highway 8991 um, with a continuous road. Right now you have to detour onto Main Street or into the residential neighborhoods to the West. So this will make that connection with a new bridge over the Logan River. Um, project scope. So this is zoomed in. This is just phase one. So this map shows phase one. Um, key things I wanna talk about is number one, it'll be a new bridge over the Logan River. Um, allowing that connection to be made. Uh, second is realignment of 100 West uh, around the church. Uh, third, we're gonna talk about the what the corridor is gonna actually look like, what the road will look like. And then fourth, the 600 South that Jim mentioned, where Logan City is putting up the funds for all the improvements on 600 South, separate of COG. So um, a new bridge, this you can see here on the left is the new Adams development. Um, this is looking south. You can see where they, they built their portion of the road. Um, and we coordinated with them to make sure that this, their design matched our design for our new bridge. So we will pick up right where they left off and build the new bridge to the south. So that, that line right there with those concrete barriers is where phase one will end um, with our new bridge. Um, this is what it looks like right now if you drive 100 west, you dead end T into this church. We obviously wanted to minimize impacts to the neighborhood. Um, so to do that, we went around the church, um, or to the east side of the church, so it'll be to your left here. Um, and we've already purchased um, the majority of that, the, the major properties for that realignment. Um, there's one small corner clip that we'll need to get, uh, but I've we've worked with property owners that are aware of it, they're happy for it. Um, we're making improvements to their property. So, so we've got the majority of the property we need to get around the church. Um, so what will, the, what will the corridor look like? Um, it's very similar to 100 East, if you're familiar with 100 East at the Logan River. Um, a key element of this is we work really hard to make trail connectivity. Um, this bridge will provide connection from all the way from Trapper Park, way west of 10th West, um, to Main Street now with our trail system. You can see we're putting a, a 10 foot sidewalk um, shared use trail on the west side of the bridge. It'll also have um, two 12 foot lanes, so travel lane in each direction, a 14 foot median, and then plenty of room for future bike lanes, future park on street parking, um, whatever we think um, is needed in the neighborhood, we have the room for it. And then a sidewalk on the other side. A key part of this project is we didn't want to conflict with any of the Main Street corridor study that's going on right now. Um, this corridor 
will be conducive to anything that comes out of the Main Street Corridor study. Um, they will work well together. Um, the betterments at 600 South that Jim mentioned, we are proposing to terminate the connection of 600 South to Main Street, um, thus eliminating the ability to get on the Main Street here. The reason for this is, um, number one, safety. Um, we don't get any points for it, but this will eliminate, um, Jeff did the math, I think he said there was about 10 accidents and at least one fatality. Um, so we're, we're making the, improve the intersection safer. Um, it will also um, limit access on both of these major, major roadways, which we know when we limit access, we increase capacity. So we're preserving the capacity of Main Street, but also improving the capacity of 100 West. And all of this cost will be, will be or entirely by Logan City. None, none of the common funds will be used for this. So need for this project, kind of talked about it, but in the regional transportation plan, talks about interconnected roads, um, building full complete roads with sidewalk facilities. Um, so we are, we are meeting those objectives. Also, this project is listed on the phase one uh, capacity projects in the 2040 regional transportation plan um, as project number nine. So project cost, I know that's the, the big, big um, question with projects is their cost. So you look here, it is an expensive project. The bridge alone is $3 million. Um, we recognize that and we don't expect the COG to bear the brunt of, of these costs. We are contributing um, $2.3 million of our own cash towards this project and we viewed it more as a partnership. I understand that the, the cost is a lot, the ask is a lot. And we tried really hard to preserve independent utility on this project. Um, as you all know, to get COG funding, you have to prove that phase one can act independently of phase two. Um, with a bridge like this, it's kind of hard to where you draw the line. That's why we, that's why we drew the line where we did is we, we had to have the bridge and the bridge is a big chunk of the cost. So um, as staff, as mayor, we've talked and we understand this is a big ask. And if this ask needs to be reduced, um, we are open to that conversation. Bearing in mind though, that we will lose some level of that independent utility. Um, that's a decision that this body can, can make. Um, and we just wanna make that make you aware of that as you rank, that if it needs to be, we, can have, we are open to that discussion of reducing the ask, um, if, if that makes a difference for anyone. I know that's really fast. I'm running out of breath. Does anyone have any questions? I didn't expect that. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good job, sir. Okay. Hey. Hey. Well, I should have dressed up or tucked my shirt in or at least worn a belt today. Um, but the purpose of the COG is to do regionally significant projects. And I should have gone home and changed, but hopefully the region is more excited about this project than Nibley is. Um, this is a project that needs to happen, but it's also a project that goes right through some of our residential neighborhoods. It's a project that we've taken a lot of heat on, but we also feel like it's our responsibility to make sure this happens. Um, if you advance it. This is, uh, you know, the 10th West Corridor was taken over by UDOT probably about 10 years ago now. And so a lot of stuff that's been happening on that west side corridor has really been driven by UDOT. And that's what's pushing this project for us. Um, a lot of the urgency comes from the fact that UDOT finally put the light in on 10th West and Highway 89 last year. Then there's also been some significant development that's taken place in Logan City that's starting to build this road out right here. For the longest time, 12th West has just been kind of a Either a, you know, it's always been in our, our master plan as a collector or an arterial, depending on which you look at and what you're doing. We've always known that it's going to have a lot of traffic. We've always maintained a lot of right of way on it. Um, 
but it's still not something we're super excited about. We just, we've got problems, we have to solve them. They're regional problems. And, and so we're just gonna have to suck it up and do it. Um, so what's been happening is in the last year, and Mayor Dance can probably weigh in on this, but a good portion of this has been approved and platted and should be under construction in the next, probably in the next 12 to 18 months, I think. Is that about where they're at? Hard to know. That one I'm not sure of. Okay. Um, there's a bunch of apartments and commercial going in here, and that's all being connected to 2200 South and to the highway. Um, when we get down below that, and we'll have, we have a more detailed thing that shows you what's going on through here, but really there's just one piece left that needs to be connected. And once that's connected, then 10th West is basically gonna run all the way from here, south of the airport, down to Highway 101 and JBS in Hiram. And the only thing that's left to connect it is fixing this intersection right here and then building a little section of road right here, which is actually platted. And you guys have all been through this stuff with developers. Um, we don't know what's going on with this particular developer at this point, but the, the road's been approved. And as far as we know, it's moving forward. Um, there's some question about whether it's gonna move forward within Logan or whether it's gonna move forward in Nibley, but but anyway, we expect that in the next couple of years that all of this is gonna be connected all the way through. And as Jeff pointed out, there's some issues with that intersection that have to be resolved. Next slide. So this is, this is a more detailed picture of what's going on. Um, the only thing that's gonna be left to connect is this section right here. The rest of this road exists. What we're focused on now is fixing this offset intersection right here. Next slide. So we went through some regional planning, or saw some regional planning, some, some local planning in Nibley to try to figure out how this was all gonna work. Um, and the best thing we could come up with for this intersection was the roundabout. I believe that roundabout was approved by the COG in 2017, but at the time that it was approved, we didn't have the requirement for the 90% design. So we guessed at how much it was gonna cost. Um, we've got that finalized now. We know where we're at. Uh, we know what that cost is. And we know that we were a little bit short in the last ask four years ago. At this point, we're ready to go to construction. Um, we're planning on spring, right, Justin? So it's gonna be spring for, for a portion of this. It's just a question of how much of it we're gonna be able to get done. And right now what we're looking at is building from this end up to 2980 South, and that's the project. Next slide. So this is the offset intersection right now. We've been going through a lot of right-of-way issues over the last several years. Um, we ended up with a full take on this home right here. Um, our choice was basically to take out four or five homes on this corner, which would have been pretty expensive or to take this home right here and then thread the needle between this home and this home here. All that's done, all the right of ways required, we're ready to go. Um, it's just a question of, of how much we're gonna be able to get done. Next slide. So this is, uh, this is what happens at that intersection right now. Most of our, in fact, all of our accidents that I'm aware of have come from uh, basically cars shooting up 12 West and not paying attention to the stop sign. The county and the city work together to try to mitigate that. There's a, we've got one of those cool stop signs with the flashing lights now. Um, I don't know if the flashing lights came before or after this, but uh, anyway, the, it's gotten to the point where the lady who lives in this home right here just goes out and she's got all these telephone poles planted in her front yard. She's got her own ballers in there. Um, Next slide. So, just happens to fall right on the scene. Can you guys see that okay? From the side, I can't really see it. But, um, but basically what we're talking about is getting from the end of this curve right here 
up to just shy of the next intersection up there because that intersection is already built. Um, so this would take care of, of smoothing that whole thing out. Um, it's it's a little it's somewhere between three eighths of a mile and half a mile for the total project length. Next slide. This is the cross section. Um, we're really not putting in betterments per se. Anything that's classified as a betterment, the city's taken care of. We've really tried to minimize the cross section. Um, the uh, we're going with swales instead of in ground stormwater. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is that um, it's it's nibbly, and so our groundwater is not too far from the surface anyway. So if we put pipes in the ground, then where are we going to take it to? Um, but part of it is also, again, to preserve that right away because by having the bigger swales, if this ever does have to be widened out for the regional use, then that's that space is there to work with. That's also why we're pushing the sidewalks all the way out to the edge of the right of way. Um, We've had enough experience in the city now with uh, with having to rebuild entire sections, and we're just trying to get ahead of that. Next slide. Our request is or sorry, 1.25 million. Um, local match is 94,000, and uh, that's what we're looking for. With that, we can get it done from from the uh, from the south end all the way up to 2980 South, which is where that next intersection is. A lot of the rest of it, we feel like we can get built with uh, with developers' money as they come into the city. But this particular section and this intersection, um, this is this is the only way that it's going to get done. I think so. With that, uh, I'll take any questions. Everybody wants to go home. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank Thanks, you. Everybody. Appreciate it. Okay, um, Jeff, do you mind pulling up just, just as a, a quick review of the total requests and the total amount, just so everybody has a quick bird's eye view of the, where we're sitting and what we're looking at? So if we were to fund all the requests, it would uh, be $8.6 in total COG requests. Uh, the rural set aside, and I can't remember exactly how much it is, but it uh, it doesn't. Uh, the two projects are basically slam dunks because they fit within that rural set aside. Um, we'll, we'll increase the cost a little bit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah, the task at hand is to try to decide the mix of projects. Uh, the way the process works is once we get your scoring in, we'll we'll show you how that shakes out. Uh, you, you can, as a COG, modify the mix of funding. You just have to have uh, state code requires that you uh, kind of justify why you're, if you do change or alter uh, the, the, how they are, are ranked and rated. Is that what you're looking for, Mayor? Yeah, okay. just to remind everybody kind of where we're at. Uh, great, great projects. Uh, we, have a, we have a good variety on projects and where they cover and I, I, I think we uh, we have a lot to consider as these are ranked and where they're at. So just keep in mind on the ranking, um, the two rural will fall under those and so no matter where they're ranked, they will be they will be ranked in that rural and then the rest of the funds that are available, which is three, four hundred thousand give or take, I can't remember how much, will be rolled up and that will be part of the participation of what everybody else has and so that's basically where the ranking are there any questions that anybody has? So I will note that I'll put the slideshows that you've just seen with each project so you can go and re review those. I'll also put the video of this up on the website in the next couple days if you want to review the video. And I, I would appreciate it if you'd shoot me an email when you have completed your, your ranking just so I kind of know. Uh, if I don't get an email, I'll just assume – uh, whatever's there at the deadline is good to go, but it would probably help if you just uh, uh, gave me an email saying I'm, I'm done. And remind everybody the deadline again. 22nd of okay. October. So uh, that's coming up right away. Uh, so uh, consider uh, what we've discussed and make sure we get that there. I'll have Jeff, let's make sure we send a reminder out on the 21st. 
just yeah, I can do that. And I'll send an appointment out of the November 9th meeting, uh, which will be hopefully the final meeting of COG for 2020. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, first. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. That concludes our Cache County Council of Government COG meeting for October 19, 2020. Again, thanks, Nimbley, for allowing us to come here.